Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Gong. Uh, this is the podcast about sales at startups, but remember, season two is a little bit different. My name is Adriel. I'm going to be your host. In season two, we're talking about what it's like to do sales at my startup, Riveter. Uh, Riveter is HR for the unemployed. We do things like built a, a product to make the unemployment application a lot faster. Well, you know the story. Uh, this episode, I want to do two things. First and foremost, I want to thank our listener, William, who actually reached out on Riveter with, uh, w w with another resource that he found and a bit of tips and said he loves the podcast. And you know what, William? We love you too. I speak for both Abby and myself. She's not going to be on in this episode. She's preparing for a work call of her own. Uh, but specifically, I wanted to talk about how, you know, last week I was thinking a lot about how we need to go a little more direct to consumer, how it's been really, really hard to get in front of businesses. So we did a, a quick pivot, uh, I guess if you can call it that, quick change of, of business plan. And we said, you know what, if we're serving users, if our job is to make this an incredible product that people who are unemployed really, really want um, and, and say, you know, thank God for Riveter, this really saved me at a really difficult time, then let's not circumnavigate it, let's go directly to users and let's see if users uh, want what we have enough to pay for it. So talked about that last time. We're sort of rebuilding this flow. Hopefully it'll be live by next week. Everything we do, we build in super short stints. So if it takes more than, you know, five days from the idea to the, to the ability to launch it, it's probably too complicated and we can test something a little bit easier. So that'll be live then. But one of the things that we needed to figure out is whether or not people would pay for it and how much. So what we did was use a tool called Unbounce, which I love. Unbounce helps you build landing pages really, really quickly, deploy them, and you just connect them to a couple of Google AdWords campaigns. And you could literally see what people care about most, compare different uh, styles of landing page, things like that. So it's a super useful tool. And so what we did to test the price was I created a, a different page for every interval of $5 in price going all the way from free to 50 bucks. And every single page was exactly the same, the same call to action. We had run a test a few weeks ago to figure out sort of which call to action and headline got the most best results. So we used those and uh, everything was exactly the same except for the price. And what was really interesting is that free and super cheap, you know, the $5, the $10 options were actually some of the least popular options. I mean, the $10 option had only a 5% conversion rate, incredibly low, which uh, the $45 option had actually a equal conversion rate to the $10 option. So that was really interesting to see. So the lower price, you know, signifies maybe it's cheap, maybe it's not worth it, maybe it's just not interesting. Lower does not always mean better. Where we found our best conversions was at the $15 and the $20 range, uh, about 23.5% of, of people converted on the $15 price, about 22.2% .2 converted on the $20 price. So what that means to us is that from the very basic description we gave, you know, no brand recognition, um, no press, really not a beautiful landing page because it's just something I created fairly simply instead of putting our, our designer Joanne on it, about 15 to $20 is the right price. So that tells us that that's the price that we're gonna launch at and say, hey, in the beginning, we're gonna be you know, maybe 15, maybe $20, maybe we'll uh, be somewhere in between. And then our goal is to figure out how to add more value to get higher. Because we saw good results. I mean, the $30 option had a 17.6 conversion rate. The $35 option had 14 conversion rate. So 14%. 14 so it's something that we need to be able to figure out, which is, you know, maybe we convert 23% at $15 and only 15% at $35. And from a revenue perspective, we'd rather have the lower conversion on the higher price. From a number of users perspective, we'd rather have the higher conversion on the lower price. So we need to next figure out sort of what our, what our goal is, that as many users as possible, is as much revenue as possible, and then take it from there. The way we're, we're sort of structuring this all is we're trying to launch this by Monday. Uh, we launched the TurboTax for unemployment product this week, actually, and had a first user. So folks in California specifically can apply directly, uh, the, apply for unemployment benefits directly to the site. The next step is giving individuals an ability to buy this on their own because clearly they showed uh, that they would at the right price if we describe the value in the right way. And 
everything here is gearing up towards sort of a public facing launch uh, with some press in two weeks. Um, y Combinator has this really great video about all these different kinds of launches you can do. You can do a, uh, you know, a friends and family launch. You could do a different groups launch. You could do a press launch. Um, and you should launch as, as early as possible. You know, we, we launched uh, the very first version after two weeks of code and, and Reed Hoffman's line of uh, if you're not embarrassed of your first launch, you launch too late is very true. So now what we're aiming for is sort of our press launch. You know, we put this in every Facebook group you can imagine. We sent it to all the Slack channels, uh, reached out to our own networks. We did all those smaller versions, but now we're aiming for some press. And hopefully the press is around this new product, this TurboTax for Unemployment product. That was the biggest hair on fire problem through all of our user interviews. So we said, great, we can't really claim to be serving the unemployed unless we have a way to apply for unemployment because um, they said that was their biggest problem. So that's what the press is going to be about. But how we capture the value of that press is what this next mini sprint of a project is, is to say, how can we give users the ability to buy this on their own? You know, somebody reads the article, uh, they, they like the idea, they go to our site right now, and there's nothing you can do unless you're a business. So we need a way to capture, put a net below the, the windfall that I hope comes um, from this press, and we're having a few of those cursed conversations. You know, talk another time about how to set up those press conversations. I'm certainly no pro, but we're getting a little bit of help. So thank you, Lauren, for that help. Uh, so that's that's what we're working on. You know, we're experimenting on, on this new business model. It kind of kind of sucks to have to pivot and change models. You know, you really have a lot of confidence in your first go around, um, and it's a bummer when you're wrong and things are more difficult than you thought they would be. But that's also that's also the point, you know, maybe, maybe we'll find out we should have started with this direct consumer option. Maybe we'll find out this is also the wrong option. We got to try something else. And, you know, I think emotionally you got to be able to, I need to be able to roll with the punches and, and figure out or understand and appreciate the fact that even if the first idea or go to market strategy had faulty assumptions, be able to write those assumptions down, test them and, and then test out some new ones. Uh, and that's that's what we're doing with this. So wish us luck. Um, hopefully next week you'll be able to check out RiveterWorks.com and see for yourself uh, what you can what you can buy and, and maybe gift it to a friend. Um, and if you've got ideas like my man William who reached out, thank you so much. Uh, shoot me an email, Adriel at RiveterWorks.com. Do what William did and uh, find us on the Contact Us page at RiveterWorks.com. Tweet me at alubarski2. Find us on Twitter as a company at RiveterWorks. And I'll talk to you next time.